Hi guys, it's Kurt from Worsey Club USA. Today we want to finish up the topic of auto accompaniment styles, um, MIDI files, WAV files, all of those things you can do with the accompaniment section of the instrument. And we're going to focus on uh, really the two buttons. I was going to say three, but there's two buttons. You see one at the top there that says MIDI and one pretty much in the middle that says audio. So we're going to be talking about those files, uh, file types and how you can load them into the accompaniment section. And when you work with them, how there's some differences in what you can do between the different types of files. And now we're looking at that main screen that we talk about so much. And we're going to focus again on that brown section. And notice right now it says style because we have an automatic accompaniment loaded. And you see some things there, tempo and variation in what chord was last played. Um, that brown box changes a little bit depending on what type of file you have loaded. So again, at this point, this is an automatic accompaniment and everybody pretty much knows what those do. So let's start off by touching accompaniment and we're going to pick uh, notice here again remember these are the styles and different types or genres of music and then notice in the middle you've got MIDI sequence and audio. We're going to go look at uh, an audio file first and I happen to have a couple of them already loaded on the organ um, I did that by importing them from a USB stick but let's just pick um, Danny boy and pick load and notice down here this uh, brown box that we talked about has changed a little bit it shows the name of the file but you notice uh, and it says multimedia instead of style but all of a sudden the uh, sound to style buttons are missing tempo is missing um, the chord that I'm playing and the variation is missing because none of those things are available in a uh, wave or audio file. Once you have the file loaded, you can certainly stop and start it using the standard um, controls for, for accompaniment or even sync start if you would like. And then one other place you can control it is again right from the uh, brown uh, area of the touch screen. Another thing I wanna point out to you is uh, the volume sliders. And on the far left, there's one there that's labeled song. And you notice we have it pulled out very slightly. And we have upper one pulled out. So those are the only two volume controls we're going to be working with as we go through this tune. The main reason I wanted to point that out is uh, next, next song we'll load will be from a MIDI file. And you can still control the overall volume with the song controller, volume controller but you'll be able to go in and adjust the volume of each of the individual parts. In, in this case, because we're working with an audio file, um, whatever was recorded, all of that is one big, um, one big sample or one big volume control, we'll call it. So if you find that the bass is too loud or the drums are too loud or any of that, um, you can't really change that much in an audio file just working with the volumes that you can edit on the organ itself. We're going to go ahead and play a few bars of this tune. And again, what I really want you to understand here is that the volume level of the whole multimedia file, Danny Boy, uh, is controlled by either the expression pedal or the song volume control and I can't edit or control individual parts in this particular file. And in this case, there's no melody line. So the intention here is that you play the melody line. You could, you could play pedals in left hand if you'd like, but again, those parts are already recorded in this particular file. So generally, you're going to play melody only. Thank you. 
Okay, so you get the idea there. And uh, you might have noticed towards the end there, the French horn part was a little bit too loud overall. So I did turn down the overall track, but I couldn't control the French horn part. So again, th that's a short example of using a WAV file. Um, actually, this one's actually an MP3 file. I shouldn't say it's a WAV, but it's uh, an audio file. Um, so now let's switch over to a MIDI file and show you how you can control that a little bit differently. Before we switch over to the MIDI file, let me show you a different example where I had mentioned uh, it could be anything. So this is a different example of a different WAV file in this case. Uh, and this is a full band with vocals and everything else. And again, now if you choose to, you could play along with this tune. What I'm trying to demonstrate is the first one had no melody line and the intention is you play along with the melody. In this case, it's a complete song with all parts are there and you can do what you like to with that if you, if you want to play along. Again, a short example, the difference there is um, the complete arrangement is there with vocal tracks and everything else. So again, if you want to record yourself singing, you can certainly do that or your friends and save that and play along with it. Different use of um, an audio based file. Loading a MIDI file, pretty much the same deal. You know, we hit accompaniment again. This time we're going to touch MIDI sequence. And we'll pick this top one up here, click load. And now it does change from multimedia to MIDI and name of the song. But again, notice that you don't have tempos or variations or any of those things because you cannot change any of that. This is basically a recording um, and those things are set as part of that file. Now in the MIDI file setup, what we can do here is hit mixer and basically you see a 16, uh, 16 different volume controls. That's one per MIDI channel. But where it gets a little bit more interesting is if you hit up here sequence edits, you're going to see the same basic 16 controls, but some other additional things are here. Um, notice solo and mute. So you could solo a particular track or mute it. But even more interesting is up top, you can change the instruments that those tracks are playing. So what you see up there are the instruments that are selected based on bank and patch change commands that are in the MIDI file itself. Uh, and you see there's a couple here that say GM as in general MIDI. This particular file started out as a general MIDI based file. And you notice over here, it doesn't say GM, it says, oops, sorry, it says a punchy acoustic bass. And that's because I had gone in and changed that to what I'm going to call a worsey sound. So by doing that, you can now pick any of the sounds, factory or user sounds that are in your instrument to play that particular track. Stop and start it the same way, either using the controls over on the left cheek block or from over here uh, with stop, start, rewind. So let, let's just do that a little bit. And same thing, I'm controlling the overall volume with the song drawbar. And if you wanna hear just that bass part, so that's soloed, and that's just the bass line, right? So you notice the melody is in there, we can turn it down to play along with it or mute it.
If you wanted to, we could mute the bass line and play bass along with it, if, if that's what you'd like to do. So again, then notice the editing differences between a MIDI file and the uh, audio file. Put, put the bass line back in if you'd like. So again, um, quite a bit more you could do here to edit or save that because what you're going to find is um, if it was if it was recorded as a general MIDI file, again, the instrument will play those sounds, but there most likely are sounds that might sound better if you use, again, what I'm going to call the Worsi sound versus the general MIDI uh, sound that Worsi has selected for a bass or a brass sound or, or whatever the case may be. And again, change the volumes. And... Uh, mute the parts out that you would like to play. Uh, this one has, what do we got here? It looks like 10 different tracks. Uh, 10 is drum, so there's, uh, and one is empty. So we've got eight tracks here of what I'll call musical parts. One is the melody. Certainly you're going to take the melody out, but you could take pedals and left hand part out and play that yourself, but have all the other parts filling in. So uh, going back again to compare, right, if you start off with just a general style or accompaniment, remember that's kind of a looping pattern and there's variations and there's introductions and breaks and fills, but those are looping patterns that are going to be four or eight bars most of the time in length. Uh, go to the audio file that we looked at and that's going to be a recording of pretty much anything you wanted it to be a recording of, but you, you can't control the individual parts in that recording. You can record, I'm sorry, you can control the overall volume, but not the individual volumes. If you get into a MIDI file, um, you can now, through the sequencing editor uh, uh, display, um, change the instruments again, or the volumes and then turn off, on or off certain parts. So three different ways you can get an accompaniment to play along with. Um, we, we enjoy playing with uh, background tracks. Um, others think that's cheating, um, but we find a lot of enjoyment and, uh, in using them. And sometimes an automatic rhythm is the right case. And other times, uh, maybe you just play straight organ with no um, automatic rhythms or, or backing tracks. Just depends on what you want to do. The, the good news is, is the instrument has the ability to do all of the above. As always, thanks for watching.